as we prepare to celebrate our Mass this evening. We will begin in a moment with our opening hymn, hymn number 22, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We come together at the invitation of our Lord, the Good Shepherd, on this the 16th Sunday in our journey through ordinary time. The disciples, too, have been on a journey and they too return to be looked after by the Lord. We come together, invited by him to be taught, to be fed, to be nourished. We come with our prayers, prayers for ourselves, for families and friends, and we pray especially in our Mass this evening for the repose of the soul of Ray Miller. The Lord challenges us, like him, to help others, to take care of the sheep that are, appear to be without a shepherd, to be loving and charitable. For the times we have failed to love in the example and the way of our Lord, for the times we have sinned, we ask for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, 
and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnant of my flock I myself will gather from all the countries where I have dispersed them and will bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and to pasture them. No fear, no terror for them any more. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks. When I will raise a virtuous branch for David, who will reign as true king and be wise, practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord, our integrity. The word of the Lord. The response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them and by restoring peace through the cross to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace. Peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have in the one spirit our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going and many could guess where. And from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So, as soon as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. We have reached the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, um, calculated after Easter by working out when Christmas is, when Advent starts, and then how many weeks you get have to do to get to the 34th week just before. But anyway, the 16th Sunday. And in this year B, we are journeying mainly with St. Mark and his Gospel. He told us last week how Jesus prepared the Twelve and sending them out in prayer, pairs, asked them to go and do his work. This week, we hear St. Mark tell us that they have returned. They are excited. They are keen to share with Jesus all that they have done. Jesus recognises not only their success, 
but also the price they have paid, the energy that they have used to be missionary disciples. He spots this and tells them, it is time for rest. In our social calendar, it is also a sort of slowing down time as well. For those of you uh, disconnected from education or from children, it's, it's school holiday time. As I mentioned in the newsletter, St Mary's broke up on Friday and I know a few more schools are breaking up Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. In fact, the head teacher's son goes to one of the local schools. Uh, they finish at 12 o'clock on Monday. She said, how ridiculous, you go in for three hours. She said, the only good thing about it was it's a non-uniform day. So she hasn't got to wash a shirt just for half a day's use. But things are winding down just a little bit. Even the church, I've always thought and seen that August, the church sort of goes to sleep. We don't do many extra things in August. The priest says to himself, well, various people will be away, so we'll, we won't do that that month. Except in this parish where uh, at the end of the month we'll go for a walk. Bank holiday ramble, we'll see how we get on. Even St. Mark is going to go on holiday. For the next five weeks, he's got a stand-in for the Gospel, and St. John will be journeying with us. He is filling in, as it were, for the Sunday Gospels. But even as they head off on the boat, we think about the first reading and the psalm. The church always links the first reading to the psalm and then the pair to the gospel. There is a flow for the gospel, a flow for the second reading, but the first is chosen deliberately to point something out in the gospel. And so even though we're thinking of holidays and rest and recreation, our first reading points us to something slightly different to Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In our response in the psalm, we have said, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In that first reading, we heard that God said, My flock, I myself will gather and bring them back to their pastures. So as the boat in the gospel touches the shore, Jesus took pity on the crowd that had gathered there because they were like sheep without a shepherd. We could say that they were unprotected, but I think principally it is that they are unguided. And so Jesus himself sets himself to teach them. Yes, he recognises that there is a need for his disciples and probably himself to have a rest. But charity and love spur him on. He sets himself to teach them. And he teaches us too, providing guidance on how to journey through life, how to live, how to love, how to care. Even when tired, he reaches out and when we are tired, or hot, because the church wants us to wear lots of layers, or as we say, mass, not that I'm guilty, not that I'm miffed about it, but I'm warm. When we're tired, he supports us, he loves us, he cares for us. In the commentary I regularly read in looking at the gospel, it said that basically... Sheep are dumb animals. I don't think it meant not speaking. He's an American writing this. But that sense of being uh, stupid, perhaps. And without a shepherd, sheep simply lie down and don't move ahead. In this weather, I can certainly understand it. I fancy lying down and not moving ahead. 
But Jesus calls to his sheep. He invites us, invites us to listen, to learn, and so by doing so, move ahead. Rest and recreation are important. To step back, to um, sail away, as he did with the disciples, for a while from the usual. To receive comfort from the Good Shepherd, who is there and who is there with them, with his crook and his staff. To go to the banquet he prepares for us. Church commends people and priests by law, as it were, to have a retreat, to step back, to have a chance to look and put things into a context, into perspective. This time we are invited to have some space. But space with Jesus. When we go, he comes with us in our boat. It is he who led the twelve, and he leads us from the crowd. And so may Christ the Good Shepherd lead us all to restful waters, hopefully slightly cool restful waters too. May he revive our drooping, heat-wilted spirit. And may he help us rest a while, so that renewed we may be inspired to take up his message and to share it with love and courage. The Lord is our shepherd. He is my shepherd and yours. Let us embrace him and his teaching and his love. Let us walk in his footsteps and draw other people to him as well. So let us stand. And as we have heard Jesus leading the twelve, the apostles, let us profess our faith using this evening the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I Amen. Our loving Lord is also our shepherd, and we are his sheep. As we commit to following him always, let us ask him also to hear our prayers which we bring before him. We pray for Pope Francis as he reminds us to fully experience God's joy. We must let go of unnecessary baggage, which only weighs us down and hinders our journey. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The Red Cross warns of significant barriers to delivering humanitarian aid to war-torn countries. May we come together as a worldwide community and pray for the 25 million people facing acute food insecurity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As our new government faces big challenges ahead, we pray that priorities like green energy, housing, the NHS, and economic stability prevail for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. As the academic year draws to a close, we pray for all teachers, pupils, and students. May they be blessed with a relaxing summer break 
and be ready and refreshed to start new learning adventures in September. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those who are feeling burdened and anxious. May the Holy Spirit restore them and bring them peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a moment for our own personal intentions. Lord, in your mercy, we ask our Blessed Mother Mary to join in our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, we can only truly be led by you and you alone. Help us to navigate our path in life and to be nurturing disciples with you at the centre of all we say and do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist, we take up our collection and we also place our prayers and petitions upon the altar. We pray, especially in our Mass today, for the repose of the soul of Ray Miller. For those who may be watching our recording, at 8.30 on Sunday we pray for all our parishioners and at the 10.30 Mass we pray in thanksgiving for the birth of a first grandchild for the birth of George Oscar Tomlinson. And as we prepare the altar, we sing our next hymn, hymn number 475. Loving shepherd of thy sheep, keep me, Lord, in safety keep. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to, to gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your holy people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just ask you please to be seated for... Uh, a few moments. Bright, sunshiny newsletter today. Um, yeah, a bit warm, but there we are. Uh, uh, if it, it wouldn't be England if we didn't complain about the weather. So we've got to have go, something. It's either too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry. Uh, it's never just right. We never have that Goldilocks moment, really. I'm sure we do, but there we are. So I do ask you to pick up, take home, and read a copy of this week's uh, newsletter. Uh, as always, various things in there. Um, this coming Thursday uh, is the uh, annual Blessing of the Waters, which takes place on the seafront uh, near Reeves Beach. 
Um, so it, you're all very welcome to join uh, with uh, our brothers and sisters from the town. Um, various of the uh, church leaders will be there. Uh, I got asked to lead the prayers of intercession as part of it, so uh, we're represented uh, in the, the service particularly as well. So an opportunity to pray for our town and for all who support and all who work on uh, the sea uh, near by us. Um, I am, you're going to get a holiday, but today's the last day I'm going to moan this side of the summer holidays about the youth club. Um, they, they should be meeting at the moment uh, on the Tankerton Slopes, having a wonderful evening. Um, but uh, sadly, at this point in time, it will be their final session, uh, possibly uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, we don't have any adult leaders at this point, and uh, either our prayers haven't been adamant enough, or whoever the Lord's speaking to uh, isn't hearing, or I'm not hearing the fact I should just give it a rest, one of the two. So we'll see. Um, still an opportunity, as I've written in the newsletter, to have something in place for September. But I do share, uh, on behalf of the parish, our appreciation for all who have helped the, our young people, uh, the adult leaders, their parents and families for getting them there, but also them for taking part. They, as I've sat there in the office afterwards, um, they seem to, they sound like they're having a good time. Even the screams, I think they're joyful screams when they're running around in the summer. But um, our youth group is coming to its close, at least for the summer, as of this evening. Um, parish Ramble, advance notice, st route still to be uh, finalised, but uh, that's going to take place at the end of August on that bank holiday Monday. Uh, next weekend, we go from talking about youth groups to, uh, shall we say, the more mature end of the community, uh, is a world day for grandparents and the elderly. Uh, so uh, an opportunity for us next weekend uh, without a second collection. There we are. We have a world day with no collection, um, unless you want me to organise one. But uh, at, the, at this point, there isn't. So uh, we have a uh, particular prayer for um, grandparents, past and current, and for all the elderly. So that, that sense of reaching out in support. Um, there's a rather longer piece in there from me this weekend, uh, listening to the readings at Mass. Uh, I made ref make reference to this little leaflet. Um, it looks small, but it does fold out. Uh, I, I ordered 50 of these so for the, for the parish. So if you want to take one away, have a read. Um, you can keep it if you wish. Uh, also, if you think, well, I've read it once, I don't want to read it again, you can always bring it back and somebody else can have a read. Uh, an opportunity for us to do that. Just explaining about um, what we've been talking about occasionally in the newsletter, or what the new lectionary is and what it isn't, and uh, the changes that uh, will come through. So do ask you to uh, have a read or look at some of the other material perhaps that is available. Um, our parish mass books, we're currently in the green year two, part two, um, but come Advent, 1st of December, or for us, the 31st of November, there'll be bright, shiny new ones, untouched by human hands, because we're planning to replace, well, okay, I'll have to get them out of the box, so almost untouched by human hands. So uh, new, fresh ones, uh, which means that not only will we have the up-to-date readings that the church is providing, but also the prayers and the responses should all be the same as what I've got. So, which I know throws occasionally a spanner in the works, but um, should mean that we won't need the additional plastic cards from Advent onwards. There we are. I think I'll leave it at that and let you bask in the glory and the brightness of our uh, citrus flavoured uh, newsletter. So let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Enjoy or endure the heat, and as they say, keep hydrated. As we go, we sing our final hymn, which is hymn number 610, 610. Praise we our God with joy and gladness never ending.